All right, the group on Facebook, everyone came up with some really good questions because it's the end of the year. They wanted some tax advice, some tax questions, but everyone's pretty familiar with federal taxes or they hire a CPA to handle it. And a lot of the questions were in regards to state sales tax, which is totally different than federal tax. Um, it's It seems to confuse a lot of people and it's actually really easy. Um, every state is different and if you don't know your state's laws or you're confused or this video doesn't help in the least bit, please hire a CPA. I am not a licensed CPA. I have to say that I'm not licensed. Do not take this as tax advice. This is just uh, my experience, how I do things, how other people do things, and um, just what I've learned over the course of my time. Uh, state sales tax is that fun, awesome thing that you pay for whenever you go to McDonald's and you buy a 99 cents cheese cheeseburger and your tab is $1.07, or when you go to a restaurant and spend 50 bucks on a steak and it's actually $55. So you're paying a sales tax. And it's pretty much every single place that you go with very few exceptions and very few exceptions to items. Sometimes you might live somewhere like we do near a cruise port where there are duty-free shops, that means tax-free. Um, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, every single place that you go will cost and charge you sales tax. They will also collect that sales tax. When you pay a shop, $50 for an item and your bill is $55 because that's the sales tax, five bucks or whatever it is, and you give them 55, the shop doesn't keep 55. They keep 50 for their item and the $5 is just them collecting it and then they sit it to the side, at least they're supposed to, they just sit it to the side and then every period, collection period, they send that money with a report to their local state government to pay it. Um, for most states, it's quarterly. Here in Florida, it's quarterly. I've seen a lot of the group posts that um, most of them are quarterly, which is every three months. Uh, let's say you begin business in January, you would collect January's, February's, and March's, and typically the states will require you to pay them um, for the first quarter, January, February, March, and April, which we have like a cutoff of like the 21st. You get like three weeks into that month because you need to collect January, you need to collect February, and then you have to wait till March in. So January, February, March to the last day of March counts. And then once April 1st comes, you're like, okay, March is done. I'm gonna count up all three months and then send them their payment. And that's why they give you two, three weeks. Again, every state is different. You'll need to research that on your Department of Revenue website. Most Departments of Revenue for states have multiple offices across your state. Uh, typically one in every county at least where you can also go into the office and meet someone. So that's what sales tax is. It's the money that's collected and then taken from the retailer, the seller, whatever it is, and sent to the state government. Now as an online seller, as an eBay and Amazon seller, you are responsible for exactly the same thing. So let's say that you have a store set up on eBay and you're located in Florida. I'm in Florida or whatever state you're in. Whenever somebody comes on to your eBay store or Amazon store and purchases from you and they are located in your state. So anyone that buys from me on eBay that's in Florida, I have to collect sales tax. Now it's up to me if I wanna charge them the sales tax. If my item's 20 bucks on eBay and I wanna charge them the sales tax and collect it and then send it to the state, that's great. Or I can just collect the 20 bucks and then take the sales tax out of my part. It doesn't matter how that works, that's up to you. I would recommend setting up eBay and Amazon to charge your sales tax for you. Sometimes it can cost you sales though on customers, so keep that in mind, because when they go to check out, they see an extra you know, 6%, 7%, 8%, whatever your state is, and then they see another item that was also $20, they may not buy from you because of that sales tax. I've seen it happen, so something to consider when you decide whether you're gonna charge customers for that sales tax or not. So what you have to do is you have to keep track each week or each month, however you wanna do it. I do it by the month. At the end of every month, when my eBay sales are done, I go into my paid and ships, I go to actions, and I click download sales history, and it goes to like two or three sheets. I think it can do like a max of 200 transactions per um, sheet, so I get you know three sheets or four sheets, however many items I've sold that one. And when that spreadsheet comes up, it's gonna be like an Excel, Microsoft Excel sheet. It's gonna pop up, and it's gonna show you um, all of your sales, it's gonna say the customer name, customer address, the item, the price, all that good stuff. And then in one column, it's going to say state, like city, state, their address, the state. So you just wanna sort that. You can just click the button at the top, it'll sort it alphabetically, and then find your state. And then every one of those transactions from your state 
will be what you want to count up in total. So what you would do is, let's say you had two transactions, 20 bucks each. And by transactions, I mean the entire price plus shipping. You charge tax on price and shipping combined. So if your item was 20 bucks and you charge $5 shipping, the price that the customer paid you was 25 plus tax, plus tax. So remember that. Um, so your total gross sales there would be $25. And then if you had a second item that was 15 plus five, that would be 20. So then your total in-state sales are $45. And then if your state's um, sales tax is 10%, which is really high, ours is six plus a surtax. Um, but let's just say it's 10% for the sake of this conversation you would owe the state 10% of $45, which is $4.50. Um, again, every state is different. Here in Florida, we have a 6%, but we also have a, a percent of sale that's added on to the 6%, depending on what county you live in. In my county, it's 1%, so I end up paying a total of 7%, but I have to break it down for them. I have to give them a 6% and a 1%. So every quarter when I file, they give me two columns. It's kind of confusing, but again, get a CPA or research it maybe with another business owner who lives in your state or go to the Department of Revenue office and ask them for these numbers. It's really, really important that you know them. Okay, so once you've determined the percentage that you have to pay and you've downloaded your sales and you've got the number and you know what you owe them, you'll have to file the paperwork. Now, most states will allow you to do it online. We can do it online. They give us a cutoff date. Now, like our cutoff date is around the 21st, but I have to process the payment within like the 18th or the 17th because it takes like two days to, to clear to them, even though it's through like a debit card or through my bank account, through like ACH, and they have to have the money by that date. So be very careful about doing that. Um, even though it's due on the 21st, I can't file on the 20th or I'll be late and I'll get, um, I'll get a fine. It's like 50 bucks a day or something and, and late fees or whatever. So make sure you understand that as well when you're asking about filing and, um, and cutoff dates and all that good stuff. Now, the confusion comes in with two parts of this. So the number one part, and this is the biggest thing, <clears throat> when you collect sales tax for the people that are in your state um, because they, you live in Florida and somebody bought from you in Florida, that's one part of it. If you have inventory, employees, merchandise, or a location, and they call this a presence or a nexus, in any other state. So for example, I open my eBay business, I'm here in Florida, I'm selling, collecting from all my Florida customers. All of a sudden, I hire a employee to list for me, and that employee lives in Texas. And that employee's job, I let's say I buy a bunch of merchandise and I have it all shipped to them. Uh, let's say I'm buying wholesale, and the merchandise all ships to them, and they're sitting there listing, and they're also doing some shipping whenever any of those items sell. I now have a presence. My business is now also located, not just in Florida, but in Texas. I now have to do the same thing I do here in Florida for Texas. By law, I have to contact the Texas Department of Revenue or go on their website. I have to file my business, register my business with them. <clears throat> I then have to keep track of every customer that buys from me in Texas. So I would take that same sales sheet, I would sort it by state, I'd pull all the Texas ones out and I'd total those up and then that amount would get paid to Texas. Now, most of us as eBay sellers, that's probably never going to um, apply to us. Because even if you hired employees or hired a lister, or hired any of that kind of stuff, um, you probably do it inside of your own state, somebody you can see, somebody that can come see your merchandise, they'll come to your office, they'll come to your business, they'll come to your store. Uh, probably not going to hire somebody that lives out of state. Now, I know some people are hiring virtual assistants. I know some of those are overseas, and if they're overseas, that's not going to affect you. However, if you hire a virtual assistant who lives in another state, like you hire one that lives in Texas, and all they do is maybe answer emails for you. That could be considered an employee in another state and you would be responsible for sales tax by law. So um, keep that in mind when you go out and hire somebody or open another location or move to another state, you're responsible. So where this comes into play, you know, largely, big time, is through Amazon. So a lot of you guys do Amazon FBA. And as you know, when you ship to Amazon's warehouse, they don't always ship it to a location in your state they will have you ship to multiple locations. Let's say that you're selling these battery chargers and you got 100 of them. They will send you three labels. Maybe they want 30 of these to go to Texas warehouse, 30 to go to Florida, and 40 to go to California. Well, 
Because you now have inventory in another state, in Amazon's warehouse, you have to file sales tax in every single state that you have inventory located in. By law, that is the law, that is not me guessing or assuming, that is called the sales tax nexus and presence law where you maintain a presence in another state, be it an employee, be it a location, or be it merchandise inventory and you're now storing inventory because Amazon made you ship it there and you're responsible for it. <clears throat> you have to file in all those states. It can become a real big pain in the butt. Most people don't. I'm going to tell you this right off the top. Most people do not do it. Um, they file in their own state. They don't file in the Amazon FBA warehouse states and uh, they get away with it. I'm sure that there are people that have been caught. Um, I'm sure that there, it's difficult. I'm sure it takes a lot of manpower to do. Uh, the auditing is probably very minimal, but again, don't break the law. I don't suggest it, uh, but that's just my experience that I've seen a lot of people not do it. Um, and so with that being said, those are kind of the things that you have to look out for um, when you're collecting sales tax. Um, the number two thing that tends to confuse people quite a bit is once you've got the sales tax all handled, and you're collecting it and you're paying it, people sometimes say, well, why do I even bother registering? If I don't bother registering, how will they know? They can catch you, trust me, they can catch you for sure. Um, they have ways of going through like your registered business, um, you know, 1099s, IRS, paperwork, bank accounts. They can find ways of figuring out that you've sold stuff. You know, they could even if they went as far as like subpoenaing eBay's records, I have seen it. Um, it's not common, but don't risk your business. Don't risk your freedom. Don't risk going to jail. Don't risk owing the IRS or your state millions of dollars. It's not worth it. Um, and so the second half of getting a state sales tax is once you do register everything, you're paying your tax, everything's cool. Your state will give you a sales tax certificate. It says your business is registered. Here's your certificate. And what's key about that certificate, which I don't have mine with me right now. I think it's in my car. Um, is that you can make copies of it. Usually you can just print offline. Make yourself a whole bunch of copies of it. Laminate the original, keep that in good shape. But before you do, run off like 100 copies of it. Once you have the copies, whenever you go source at say a pawn shop or a thrift store, somewhere that charges tax, you are exempt from paying that sales tax that you're charging the other people. So if you walk into a pawn shop and they have a $50 camera you wanna to buy to resell, you can get it for $50. You hand them your sales tax certificate, they sign off and you get it for no tax. It only counts for inventory you're going to resell. It's why it's called a reseller's tax certificate. If you're buying that $50 camera to use personally, or even as a business photography camera. If you are not reselling it, you must pay tax on it or you're committing a crime. Do not buy an item and keep it if you got it tax free. Now, if you bought an item to resell it and you try to sell it and you can't sell it, you can't sell it, can't sell it, finally you're just like, oh, I'm gonna keep it. Probably okay with that, you could probably get away with it, um, but you know, that's, up to you to decide, but that's what the reseller tax certificate does. Now, some places will tell you they don't accept it. I've ran into a few, very few places decline my tax certificate. If they do, pay the tax, keep the receipt on your $50 camera for five bucks that you paid tax, and at the end of the year, when you do deductions on your federal taxes, you can take that amount of tax that you paid, there's a column in federal taxes for sales tax that you paid this year, as a reseller on inventory that you resold. And if you resold that item, you can deduct that sales tax. You'll get a, a portion of it. So it's not as good, but it's still a deduction that you can take. So that is sales tax 101. That's like the easiest way I can break it down for you. I know there'll still be a lot of questions, a lot of comments, concerns. If there are, the comment section is always down below for you guys to use. You can definitely ask away. Um, I have a very good um, CPA, Paul Galeo, who is a part of my Facebook group. He lives locally about an hour and a half from me, give or take, and uh, I'm sure he'll check this video out and I'm sure he'll see the comments. So if you do have questions that I can't answer, um, he'll be there and I can guide you towards him. I can also potentially guide him uh, guide you towards him to help you with your taxes in general because he's offering those services. He's really good and um, I would trust what he says. So with that being um, said, I will let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully this helps you. Thumbs up if it does, if it cleared it up for you, explained it for you. And uh, as always, the comment section down below is for any other questions you don't understand. And the description box just below my face and just above the comments has a ton of great links and information for you guys. Facebook group. Uh, if you want to join the VIP Facebook group, uh, we have the free Facebook group. 
uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, all my Amazon links for all my equipment, my eBay store if you want to visit my eBay store, whether you want to stalk it or learn from it or shop from it, or if you go shopping on eBay from anyone, please use that link. Uh, in the meantime, I got to get back to work. I'll let you guys go and I'll see you next time.